Hey guys, I'm Nate the Intern, and welcome to Bill, Welcome back to Built by Design. So here I've got my friend Ian, and it's on his last video, and here's going to show you how to use the frame analysis tool. We all know that frames get pushed to the limit in FRC. Often you have teams with complaining about you know bent frame members and having to re-weld components. So here Ian's going to try to show you how to prevent those problems in the first place. Ian? Yeah, so Autodesk Inventor has some built-in frame analysis tools that are really helpful for seeing how your frame would work out in the real world. So what we can do is we can just start from the frame we made last time and just get directly into it. Okay, so this time we're going to learn about how to use Inventor's built-in frame generator analysis tool. So what we can do is just go straight into the frame analysis and create a new simulation even though most of the buttons are grayed out at this point. So you don't really need to mess around with the settings at all. You can just change the name to something descriptive of what you're doing. So in this case, you're gonna show us what happens when a robot gets hit from the side. Yeah, it, hopefully it is a pretty good simulation of what you might actually see in an FRC match. Yeah, like if you're pinned up against a wall and some rookie team decides to go all Rambo on you. Or even a veteran team that has a lot of traction. Yeah. yeah. So, as you can see, it's kind of reduced the frame into its most basic elements. Since it's all generated from the same profile, it can actually do the calculations a lot more efficiently than if it was um, a completely custom frame. So the first thing you have to do is create some fixed points. That way it knows which parts of the robot can't move. So I'm gonna zoom in, make sure I select the right node, and then do the same on the back corner. All right, so those are kind of representing our two wheels in the back, or, you know, whatever is pinned up against a wall. Yeah, and then I'm also going to add one in the middle. and. What this really shows you is that you can offset it along the beam instead of just placing it arbitrarily. So I'm going to set the offset so that it's pretty much right in the middle. Very nice. So now we have our fixed points. So what we need to do here is actually add the force that we want. So we go up, select the force tool, and then select the member or the point where we want to apply the force. In this case, we're going to apply it opposite the side that we fixed. Then you select the magnitude of the force. In this case, I'm just going to do it 200 pounds force. Um, you can change that depending on the situation that you want to simulate and then I also have to change where the force is pointing because right now it, it would be like if a robot just landed on that member instead of colliding into it. So I have to change the angle of the plane the vector is in so that rotates it around the member that it's at and as you can see zero degrees is pointing that way so I switch it to 180. Also, you can change the offset here. So this is a point force? Yeah, this, uh, this is a point force. And then you can also change its angle in the plane that it currently is in. So right now it's a robot hitting us directly head on, but you could make it so it's hitting you at a 60 or even real, very shallow angle. A glancing blow, if you will. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the other vector that you see there is just gravity. It doesn't have much influence on this simulation, but it is added in anyways. And so now you have all of your fixed points, you have your force, and so you can just start the simulation since even all of the material materials are set when we generated the frame. 
So depending on the quality of your computer, this can take a while, but as I said earlier, it reduces the frame into its most basic elements, so it's able to go pretty quickly generally. So now what you're seeing is a map of the displacement of the various members. Um, if you look uh, over here, it shows a graph of what colors correspond to what displacements, and you can see that the units are in inches. Now notice that um, the maximum displacement is about a quarter of an inch, but if you actually look at the model right now, you'll probably notice that it looks like this thing is deflecting a lot more than a quarter of an inch. Don't be freaked out. This is just what Inventor does to draw your attention to the spot of most deflection. It just make, it's just a tool to make it easier for you to see what's going on. Don't assume that that's actually what would happen. A quarter of an inch really isn't that much. Especially if we're getting 200 pounds at a, a force at a single point, yeah. which is probably not going to happen, especially now with the GDC's bumpers on every robot rule. Yeah, and that really has helped to increase the force of collisions. A as you can see, it really affects the whole frame. Even the mast is affected, so it, you can really see how a force kind of percolates through the entire thing. Yeah, it's interesting. You can see how much the, the fact that those are just so long increases their deflection as the tips have a lot more deflection than, this, than the bottoms. Yeah. Even though they're farther away from the force. Yeah. And, and so there's actually a lot of other tools that you can look at. So that's just one. You can also, you can also look at the shear stresses and you can activate it by just right clicking and selecting activate. It shows you where the TX shear stress is, if you know what that is, or the TY. But, and then you can also look at other stresses like the torsional or even the normal stresses. And now, most people are probably really lost at what all of these stresses are. And this is where we, we really suggest you talk to a mentor. An actual engineer who knows how to interpret these things and knows if that little red point is going to be too much for our boxed aluminum. Yeah, I have yet to hear of a robot breaking a, a, a piece of tub tubular aluminum in a competition, but yeah. uh, you never know. So always make sure that, you know, these results are great, but you're gonna, it helps to have a engineer to help make sense of them. So use those mentors. Yeah, they're really helpful. All right. Well, Ian, did our friend pass the test? Yeah, it looks like it would stand any hit that it would reasonably take in an FRC match. All right, well, then I'm comfortable with it, and I think we're ready to move on. So thank you for your time, Ian, and hopefully Certainly. we're going to make frames. Until next time, I'm Nate the Intern. This was Ian. Good luck out there. <laughs>